Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be having a look at some dot plots and also we're going to be checking out describing skewness. So I've got this question here, it says 15 soccer players recorded the number of goals they kicked in a season, draw a dot plot below and describe its skewness. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these goals scored and we want to translate them down here into this dot plot which I already have set up. So we've got five categories in our dot plot and the first one is x is greater than or equal to 0 but less than 5. So this means that if x is greater than or equal to 0 we will include it so long as that it's less than 5. If it's equal to 5 we will not include it in this bracket. In our next category we have x is greater than or equal to 5 and x is less than 10. Again if it's 10 we won't include it, we'll put it in the next category. And next category is x is greater than or equal to 10 and less than 15. So this means that if it's 15, we will include it in the next category. And then we've got x is greater than or equal to 15 and less than 20. And again, if it's equal to 20, we'll put it in this x is greater than or equal to 20 category. So what we want to do is we just want to take these goals scored and translate them down here into our distribution. So the way we do that is we just go through and we basically pick out the numbers and put them where they go. So we could do this just number by number or category by category. So I think I'll work by categories first. So I'm looking for numbers which are less than 5 but equal to 0. So these would be the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. So if I go through my data set, I've got no zeros, 1, 2, oh, I've got a 4 here. So I'd put that there. I just put a dot because we're doing a dot plot as per our question. Then I've got another four, so I'd put that there. And then I've got a two, so I'd put the two there because two is in that set. So that would be our first category. For our second category, we're looking for the numbers which are either five, six, seven, 8 or 9, but not 10 because we're only after numbers which are less than 10. So I can see that if my first up I've got a 6, so that would definitely be included. If I keep going through, nope, 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 oh, I've got an 8, so I'll put my 8 there. I've got a 9 as my next number, so I'll put my 9 there. Then I've got a 6, a 7, and a 5. So they'll all be included. Then I've got no, 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 and no. Cool. So for my next category, I'm looking for the numbers 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, but not 15 because we're only after numbers which are to less than 15. So if I go through again, oh, I've got a 10, so I'll put my 10 there. If you haven't noticed already, these are color coded, so you should be able to just pick out which numbers are going to be in the category before I finished. So if I keep going through, I've got an 11, which would definitely be in there because 11 in the category, and then I've got a 13, which would also be in there. Then we check, there's no more, and we'd finish up, and we go to our next category. So our next category, we're after numbers between greater than 15 or equal to and less than 20, so this would be the numbers 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19, but not 20 because 20 would be in the next category. So if we go through, we've got a 15, yep, and we've got no others, so that would be all for that category. And then in our next category, if we go through, we're after numbers that are greater than 20. So this could be 20, 21, 22, 23, blah, 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 all the way up to infinity. So if we go through, we've got, nope, we've got a 20, which would be in there because we're after numbers which are greater than or equal to 20. And then we've got 22, which would definitely be in there. So that is how we'd first construct our dot plot. And we can see that our 
mode is all the way down here, our most frequent number, and we could also work out other stats, sort of like our average, or our range, or our median, all those sorts. But what we've been asked to do is draw this dot plot, and we've done that. So we've done the first part of the question. What we need to do now is describe its skewness. Describe its skewness. So if we're looking at the plot, we can see that we've got this almost symmetrical part down here, where we have 3, then 6, then 3. But we have a lot more figures extending up this way, so we've got sort of a longish tail, what we'd call a long upper tail. And we have a lot of a lot of larger numbers. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to see if we can trace over maybe a shape onto our curve. So I'll do this in a yellow. If we were to draw it, and I'll try get this right the first time, curve would kind of go up like that, peak there, and then it would come down in a slope like this. So that's what our curve would look like. We've got kind of a peak, but then this really long upper tail. So because we have this long upper tail, we have what is called a positive skew. So this long upper tail basically leads us to having a positive skew. So there is a video on skewness on the site for you guys to have a look at. But when we have this long upper tail, we've got a positive skew. So if we were to describe this distribution, we would say the distribution, and we can always chuck it into a really complex essay, but we'll just say for our purposes the distribution has a positive skew. And we identify that by this long upper tail and our large number of larger numbers relative to the center of the data. So this would be our center, and we've got this long upper tail and a lot of large numbers compared to our center. So our distribution has a positive skew. So that's how we draw a dot plot and describe its skewness. I hope it's of some value to you guys, and thanks for that, and I'll see you for the next video.